Hello, people. It's me again, your old friend, Muckster. Uh, I just uh, I was talking to a friend today, and as I was talking to her, I was reminded of a guy I met in college. Uh, and I will tell you, before I tell you about him more, I do owe him big because if it wasn't for him, I never would have met the other friend that I was talking to who is basically a friend for life. And the odd thing about her is she didn't actually go to college with us. She was there uh, in the one summer. She was going to this like tech technical school and they rented out uh, empty dorms from Robert Morris in the summertime. And for a uh, short time, she uh, dated the guy that I'm going to mention, Ken. And that's how I met her, because Ken was one of my roommates. And like I said, it ended up, uh, she's pretty much the only person from my college age that I still have any regular contact with. Anyway, um, but she's not essential to this story. I'm just telling you that that's how I met her. Uh, anyway, Ken. Now, I met Ken. It would have been the summer after my sophomore year. The uh, I had decided that year to go to summer school. And there was a... Uh, now, I should explain to you now... At Robert Morris, back then, who knows what it's like now. When you were a, a freshman and a sophomore, you stayed in, like, regular dorms. You know, the kind of dorms with rooms down either side of the hall, usually two guys to a room, one uh, big uh, bathroom on each floor. And that was, you know, pretty much what you had. Now, in the summertime... And then also junior and senior year, you went to the suites, which was also called the upper class dorms, upper class men dorms. They weren't, but they were a little, they were like almost sort of like apartments. You had five bedrooms around the common living room. Now in the dorms, they were like three, three floors, you know, like I said, and there was one lounge for the whole dorm. We had our own, you know, in the suites, then you had your own living room for those five rooms, probably 10 guys. Sometimes someone might have a private room. And then you shared a uh, bathroom too, but, you know, there was, there was a separate door coming into the living room from the hallway. So they were like, you know, little contained apartments. You had a little more privacy. But anyway, that's how I met... Uh, Ken and also a guy named Dad, because they both started school that summer, but they were guys that uh, had either transferred or had gone to college before and quit. And uh, now uh, they just started at uh, Robert Morse. So they were also, you know, upperclassmen. But anyway, and I'll just mention like Dad, he was Ken's roommate. And the reason we called him dad is because he was 32 years old. That seemed old to us then. But you got to remember, people my age were the ones that grew up with our favorite uh, singers and hippies saying, don't trust anybody over 30. Now the people that used to say that to us, if they're still alive, are like in their 80s and 90s. But anyway, that was dad, but... Ken was, uh, he was a bit younger. I think he was like 27 or 28, if he was that old. He had worked a few years before deciding to go back to college. And Ken was, he was a nice guy. He was, one thing I remember about him, he was built kind of odd. Because when he was standing next to me, he was actually a, an inch or two taller than me which at the time would have put him, you know, like around 6'3 or something. 
I'm shorter now. And, but when we sat down, he was like this much shorter than me. The guy was like all leg. But anyway, now I was never a really good judge of judging other guys' looks. There were, you know, there's some obvious ones. Like my one roommate, Brad, we used to call him, uh, oh God, I forget what we, Sun, no, it wasn't Sundance. It was something like that because everybody said he looked like Robert Redford. And it was obvious that uh, Brad was good, a good looking guy. But anyway, uh, Ken, I didn't think he was particularly good looking or anything. He wasn't ugly. But somehow he had a way with the ladies. And like I said, that's for a little while he dated that girl that became a good friend of mine. And he dated other times and that. And uh, we got to know each other that summer. And then the, when the fall came up, Ken and Dad both, along with me and some other guys already knew, we got a suite together for the regular semester, you know. And I always remember when Christmas time was and Ken, Ken used to always tell us stories about uh, his girlfriend Carol. He used to talk about they they'd been dating for a long time. I got to interrupt with a story about, I met Carol once. And this is, I'll get back to where we are with the other story. But the one time, now I, I worked on campus and I worked in the AV department. But at one point there, the secretary, our secretary had moved to the Dean's office. I imagine it involved more money and stuff. And so I used to play secretary receptionist. You know, my boss had me out there. I'd answer the phones and stuff. And that was, that's where people would come in. And the other thing about it is the AV department. And also there was the uh, print shop. We also had TV studio. That was all the first floor of the library. And the library was the second and third floor. So a lot of times people would come in and they'd see our, uh, you know, glassed in office. And they'd come thinking, is this the entrance to the library, you know? And I just say, no, that's the stairs over there. But anyway, so I'm sitting out there the one day and this girl comes in. And she said, uh, I'm looking for the library. And I think I said something about that. I don't know if she like said that uh, somebody said, somebody told her that's where her boyfriend would be. Or if I asked something about, you know, where, what exactly was she looking for? And she mentioned that, that, and I said, oh, what's his name? And she said, Ken. And I won't bother saying his last name. And I said, or no, I think, I think actually she didn't say his name, but she said something that I, Oh, no. Okay. I'm back. I know. Uh, she, uh, she said, Ken, you know, and I said, oh, you must be Carol. She goes, yeah. How did you know? I said, oh, I'm muck. I'm, I said, I'm one of Ken's roommates. He's talked about you. And she said, now this was her big mistake. She said, why? What does he say about me? Now, if you know me at all, you know, I can't resist a straight line like that. And also the other thing about me is a lot of times I'll say things and I'll think, how could a person not know this is a joke? But anyway, she says, why, what does it say about me? And I automatically said, oh, I wouldn't want to repeat it. She goes, why, what does he say? And I say, it's not up for me to repeat it. And she kept saying, what? And I said, look, I don't want to cause trouble. I just, I don't want to be in the middle of this, you know. But I told her how to find the library. So, uh, fast forward an hour or two. Ken comes to our suite. And he was 
slightly annoyed with me. I think uh, if uh, he didn't know better, he might have taken a swing at me. He said, you just ruined my night. She kept saying, what are you saying about me? And I kept saying nothing. And well, why would he say that? She said, well, you got to know. He says, you got to know Muck. He thinks that funny. Oh, why would anybody think that's funny? So, you know, this great uh, little date night they had planned was uh, ruined. Anyway, back to the original story about Ken. You know, he, so he kept telling us about Carol. Well, Christmas break was coming up. And the night before we were all leaving, he says, hey guys, over Christmas break, me and Carol are going to go down to Virginia and get married. Now, I don't know what the laws are like now, but back then, you know, Pennsylvania, I think, uh, yeah, you got a license and you had to wait three days or something. But you could go down to Virginia, look to Virginia, and it was, you know, same day service. Kind of, <clears throat> kind of like going to Vegas. So he says, we're going to Virginia and get married over Christmas break. And now, me being me, and I wasn't trying to do anything to cause problems. I thought, one of our buddies is getting married. We can't let him just go off to get married without some kind of bachelor party. So, and of course, it was too late to like go buy any booze or anything. So I went around from sweet to sweet gathering booze. And, you know, believe it or not, pretty much everybody on campus knew me and most of them liked me. Hard to imagine, right? So I went around and I got, you know, somebody had like, this much vodka left in a bottle. Somebody else had three bottles of beer. Somebody else had, you know, some rum, whatever. And I just got this box full of mixed booze and me and the other guys threw Ken an impromptu bachelor party. I thought I was being a nice guy. Well, I found out later, Ken said to his roommate, and I won't use all the words because of the kiddies out there, but he said that bleeping muck went all over campus telling everybody I was getting married. He said, I'll never get a date on this campus again. Think about that. The guy claims he's going off to get married to this girl he'd been dating for who knows how many years. The love of his life. And he was afraid I just ruined his dating life. So that tells you a little bit about Ken. And I'll give you a little tip. I won't tell you the story because of reasons. But Ken being like that is one of the reasons that the friend I mentioned earlier was no longer with him. And also it had to do with me and her becoming good friends. But anyway, uh, now let's, so that was then. Oh, and then, so then Ken, he comes back after Christmas and everybody was like, oh, hey, how'd it go in Virginia and stuff? He said, oh, we never got to go. He said, I got home. We were all packed and everything. He said, the engine blew up in my, blew out in my car. It cost me $600 or whatever it was, so we never got to go. Okay. Me being stupid, I bought it. A couple years later, I don't know, I think maybe five years, and I'm living out in Pittsburgh, going to Penn Tech at the time. That was the electronic school I went to. Yes, I am a man of many talents. While I was in college, I studied business, economics, marketing, a little bit of uh, psychology. Uh, I forget what else. Then I went off and studied electronics. And then I spent 27 years as a librarian. Anyway, 
Uh, so it was like a couple years after college and I'm living out there. And I was still in contact with some of the guys from the time we decided to have a little mini reunion. And I think it was like me and Bob who uh, had been my, my roommate and uh, might have been the other Ken and Gary, I don't know, but this Ken and Carol were there and we all, we got together at my apartment in Pittsburgh and we're talking about old times and stuff. And, you know, it's like, hey, remember the time so-and-so got drunk and, you know, stole the uh, security captain's car and, oh, hey, remember that time? Uh, true story, my 21st birthday, we were gonna have a party and uh, in the afternoon, you know, we got booze for the party for my 21st birthday. And it was in the afternoon and we ended up sitting down and we drank all the booze. So we had to go out for more. And so uh, we went over to Sewickley to the liquor store. But while we were over there, we decided to stop in our favorite uh, haunt, the Sewickley Hotel. That's a bar a couple of us were regulars at. And I always, one of the things I... Uh, was always disappointed about. We went in and uh, my roommate Bob says, hey, it's his birthday. And they're going, oh, how old are you? And I almost said 21. And you know, if I said 21, probably would have got a lot of free drinks. But I stopped myself because I thought, uh, I've been a regular here for three years. If I tell them I'm 21, that just might piss off the bartender. Because Pennsylvania, the drinking age was 21. Anyway, on the way back to campus, we wrecked my roommate's car right at the entrance to Robert Morris. And uh, when the cop came, I remember, uh, you know, when you try to sound sober. Well, Bob was pretty much wiped out. Oh, Ken Poor died. At least oh, that was Ken's last name, Poor, by the way. Uh, at least that was what people on campus thought because he was passed out in the back seat and some people went by and saw the wrecked car and saw him laying back there and by the time we got back to campus the story was he was dead but anyway when, when the cop came and that and I remember what happened was Bob turned left in front of this guy and I just remember that guy who's out of his car and he's going look what you did to my car look what you did to my car anyway the cop came and he was asking what's happening and I'm there like going well you see officer we were headed north that fellow was headed south we went to turn into the driveway and we collided and the cop said now the, the car was really messed up but it could still be driven, even though, you know, one fender was off like that and everything. I think we might have had to bend, bend the fender away from the tire a little bit. He asked me if I'm okay to drive. And I said, yeah. And it was, it was okay uh, for me just to get it back up there into the parking lot. But kind of shows uh, the way things were different back then. Today... At least one of us, meaning Bob, would have been arrested. But, I mean, the cop knew all three of us were obviously blitzed, but he let me drive the car up to campus. And I don't think uh, Bob didn't even get cited for drunk driving or anything like that. But, of course, he had to. Uh, he was on the hook for all the damages because it was obvious. That, but I always thought uh, it was a little ironic that it was my 21st birthday and it was Kind of everybody else had the fun. Ken died. Bob wrecked his car. Anyway, back to the original story. And I know this one's getting a little long, but I'm coming to the end of it. So just shut up and listen, would you? Back to our us having our little reunion at my apartment a few years after college. And we're talking about old times. And then I said, remember that Christmas? 
when Ken was supposed to go to Virginia and marry, marry Carol, <clears throat> but his car broke down and they couldn't go. And like I said, I might be a little slow, but nobody said anything. But I saw Carol give a look and I could read that look. That look was, what the hell is he talking about? We got married that Christmas. So I could just imagine what the conversation was later. I don't know if he tried the old, well, you know, Muck likes his jokes. Or, or I got to think, the girl had to know what a dog he was. So she had to know that he lied to everybody about getting married so he could keep dating. But uh, that was pretty much, that was that's what I was reminded of when I was talking to my other friend today. And just, I always remember that guy. And, you know, he was always, you know, a pretty good guy. But uh, not somebody I could say I really liked. You know, I just don't really like people that uh, cheat like that. And I don't know. Anyway, yeah, it's a little college story for you with a little extra thrown in there, I think. And I think I'll let you go because this is longer than I usually like to make them anyhow. But uh, I hope you enjoyed and Peace out. Hey, Alexa. Just kidding.